last question. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Kara Dixon with Canon with Kara, and today we are with Attorney General Mark Herring here. Well, welcome, welcome, Kara, to our backyard in Leesburg. Yes. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and uh, when I am home, I get to occasionally do a little bit of gardening. So, wanted to come back here and show it off. All right, and how are you doing today? Doing great. It's a beautiful day, beautiful spring day in Virginia, and the birds are singing, so <laughs> it's great. All right, and why are you running again for re-election? So I'm running for re-election to build on the tremendous progress we have made over the last eight years. When I first started, uh, I brought a whole new vision about what an attorney general should be. I think the attorney general is the people's lawyer, and the powers of the office should always be on the side of the people. And so that was the new vision I brought. We did a lot of uh, bold things, uh, went in and fought for marriage equality and won, and look how much progress we've made since then. Uh, made sure dreamers could get uh, an equal education in Virginia and so many other things. And then we had four years of Donald Trump and so much of the work over that four year period was literally shoring up our democracy, making sure it was protected as well as pushing back against the Trump agenda. And now we have a, a president, Joe Biden, that we can work with in the White House, uh, a democratic legislature, and the opportunity to build on the progress we've made over the last eight years is just really exciting. All right, and how would you describe yourself to voters? What should they know about who Mark Herring is? <laughs> well, I am, am first uh, a husband and a father. My wife, Laura, and I have raised two children here in Loudoun County, which is where I grew up. Uh, I was raised by a single mom, and my first job out of high school was working construction as a laborer. Uh, my second summer, I had worked my way up to running a jackhammer. 58 <laughs> hours a week in the hot Virginia sun, and I am here to tell you, I built both muscle, muscles and character, uh, but you know, working working jobs like that uh, with Pell Grants and government loans, I was able to work my way through college and then law school and uh, met Laura along the way. We fell in love and uh, we came back to my home, hometown uh, to raise our family and establish our law practice. All right. So, are you excited to get gardening? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's it's still early, um, so not a lot is planted, but. Um, we've got some fruit trees, uh, pears, apples, uh, plums, apricots. Uh, I've got a lot of berries, blackberries, yeah. <laughs> raspberries, black raspberries. Uh, so those are those are all coming up and starting to bloom. Uh, we've got some lettuce seeds planted. They're starting to come up. Some potatoes. So um, you know, love, love to show it off. All right, awesome. How did you get into gardening? Oh. So um, I grew up in Loudoun County uh, at a time when it was very rural and so houses were far apart and we had a huge garden and I, I spent spring, summer and fall just doing a ton of gardening with my mom and um, so it, you know I grew up doing it and the reason I, I think I like it so much is it reminds me of my childhood, it reminds me of my mom and growing food is something that people have done for you know tens of thousands of years so it's kind of a connection to um, to humanity in a way, uh, but I also just like being out here. Uh, I'm an early riser, so I like to get up before sunrise, make a pot of coffee, uh, have a little breakfast, and then bring out my coffee mug and kind of walk through the garden and take it all in um, with the birds singing and the the bumblebees, you know, buzzing around the squash blossoms and everything starting to wake up and just just kind of take it all in. First question, what flaw did the pandemic expose with the Virginia's government? Well, I think um, it, it exposed a lot of inequities in our commonwealth and really in our country. Um, and the, the impact that COVID has had has been disproportionate, this, you know, disproportionate, heavy for communities of color, uh, for those who have low incomes, uh, hourly workers, things like that. And it really exposed a lot of inequities in healthcare and housing and basic safety net protection. All right. Second question, what does a post-COVID Virginia look like? You know, I think um, 
uh, we, we still have a ways to go to uh, get through the pandemic and a long ways to go to recover from it. Um, I think the, a post uh, COVID world in Virginia, there are gonna be some things that, that have changed forever. Uh, and some, I think for the better, like we now know that a lot of us can work from home uh, and that we need to have flexibility in order for our personal well-being or to help our family get through some things. And so I think a lot of that's gonna change, um, but we also need to really work to rebuild our economy. And I think uh, people are gonna be really ready to, to uh, help do that and uh, help with job growth and, and get people's incomes back again. Um, apricots there, and then this will be the vegetable, one, one of the two vegetable gardens. Um, it's a little early to get stuff growing just yet. You might notice all the chicken wire that's up. Uh, the rabbits here are <laughs> prolific and they will just like mow down anything in their path. Do y'all get deer out here? We do, yeah. we get deer, we've got foxes and everything else. Um, so these are our blackberries and if you look closely, you can see like they're just starting to, the, the blooms are just starting to come out. Um, but uh, if you look closely, they're all over. And I think in about six weeks, these are gonna be dripping with blackberries. Third question, what would your first 100 days in office look like if you're reelected? Uh, well, it, it'll allow us to really build on so much of the progress we've made. You know, uh, I, think, I think of really three different areas. Uh, continue to build in racial uh, justice and police reform. Second, uh, expanding and protecting our uh, health care and, and well-being. Uh, and third, probably increasing protections for workers. Virginia has is a very pro-business state, but it hasn't always been pro-worker, and we need to change that and make sure that workers are protected. What do you do with all of this once it's you can harvest it? Oh, eat it, <laughs> eat it, and uh, you know, and, and when we have more than we need, it's fun to give it away too. Yeah, uh, and 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 um, eating fresh vegetables that you've grown yourself, they just taste so much better because they're fresh, they're just picked, and uh, and I don't I don't use any chemicals. I just yeah, I, I, you're I, like I did this. I, yeah, well, <laughs> but but you also know that. Um, you know, there are no chemicals, you don't have to worry about any of that. The easier questions now. <laughs> what is your favorite movie? Oh, wow. Well, during COVID, I haven't really watched uh, too many movies in the theaters, but uh, we did binge on Mandalorian and it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and I'm, I can't wait for the new episodes to come out. All right, I've actually seen that. So a lot of the other answers for people, I haven't seen this, but I'm a Star Wars fan. So oh, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, second question. What is the moment that's impacted your life the most or who is the person that's impacted your life the most? Um, you know, I have to say my mother. Um, and I, I talked about how um, she was, a, you know, I was raised by a single mom. And uh, we heard this story, my sister and I growing up. Before we were born, my mom was a flight attendant and she loved that job. Um, but at some point she met my dad they made plans eventually to marry, and then she was forced to quit her job because they had a no marriage rule. Women could not be flight attendants if they were married. And you know, she kept she would tell us that story and how unfair it was, and how. And then about 25 years later, there was a class action lawsuit, and that was changed, and she was offered her job back. Circumstances were different; she declined that, but um, it made her feel so much better that that wrong had been made right, and that her sense of fairness had been vindicated. And I've taken that with me uh, through law school and now as attorney general. And I think that's why I'm so effective at this job is because I am passionate about righting wrongs and helping to make people's lives better by using the law as a tool to help people who are vulnerable, discriminated against, who truly need the arm and shield of the law to help them protect them. Last question, what do you hope is your legacy? Well, um, I've brought a, a new vision for what an attorney general should be. And it is my hope that uh, from now on, people's expectation about what an attorney general should be doing will be forever changed, that people will see that it, the attorney general should be out there fighting for, for them, fighting for their rights, and helping to protect them.
Any last message you have for voters? Anything you want them to know? You know, I would just say that as Attorney General, I have put the powers of the office on the side of the people, which is where it should be. And I ask again for your support and your vote on June 8th or earlier if you choose to vote early. And I'll see you on the campaign trail. All right. Thanks for joining us. I, I had fun today. All right. Good. <laughs>